Mr. Pistorius, please rise. The following is what I consider to be a sentence that is fair and just both to society and to the accused. The sentence imposed is the maximum imprisonment of five years. The court has now handed down judgment and sentence and we accept the judgment. Oscar will embrace this opportunity to pay, to pay back to society. A man and a woman went into the bathroom of this house one night in February last year. Only one came out alive. That was Valentine's Day 2013. What happened in that room and why has captured world attention since. The interests of society demand that those who commit crimes be punished and in deserving cases that they be punished severely. Within minutes, Oscar Pistorius was whisked away to this prison. It will be his home for some time, but perhaps not as long as some would have liked. We ought to differentiate between what is in the public interest and what society wants. He's going to serve a sixth of his sentence and then he'll come out on house arrest. One sixth. One sixth. So that would be how long? It'll be about ten months. Ten months in jail and then under house arrest. Yes. Reva Steenkamp met Oscar Pistorius in November 2012 through a mutual friend. Her parents never met the boyfriend who took their daughter's life, shooting four bullets through a toilet door. A family of devout Christian faith, they've already said if he's telling the truth, they'll forgive him, but that justice had to be served. He could be out after just a year or so. Doesn't matter, he's going to pay something. Do you think justice has been served? Yes. Are you um, satisfied? We, we are satisfied. <laughs> Outside, the public disappointed for them. It's not fair. He should be, He should get a life sentence. What he did to Riva, it's it's so bad, you know. As friends paid tribute to Riva, they reflected on how differently that fatal night could have gone. She was meant to return to your house that night, and at the last minute decided to stay at Oscar Pistorius's house. There must be a lot of you looking back to those times and thinking, if only, if only. There's, there'll always be questions. They'll, you can't keep dwindling on the past and what ifs and what nights. You'll go crazy. Um, what matters the most is that we got to experience her and she was an extraordinary human being. The loss of life cannot be reversed. Nothing I say or do today can reverse what happened to the deceased and to her family. Hopefully this judgment on sentence, on sentence shall provide some sort of closure for the family and for all concerned so that they can move on with their lives. Something like this changes my brother's lives, our lives, the Steen Camps, their family, their friends. It's never going to be over. It may not be over, but here's how it began. The 29-year-old law graduate turned actress and model was dating Oscar Pistorius for just three months when she was killed. Both well-known and well-liked public figures, the union saw them quickly become darlings of the nation, South Africa's sweethearts. Yeah, watch this space. <laughs> it was rumoured the pair were discussing marriage and their long-term future until Valentine's night 2013. Olympic sprinter Oscar Pistorius. The world's fastest runner without legs facing charges that he murdered his fashion model girlfriend. It's a story everybody's talking about. It was trending on Twitter Thursday morning. Oscar Pistorius, the South African athlete who became one of the stars of the London Olympics, has been charged with the murder of his girlfriend. It was a story which grabbed headlines around the world and left South Africans reeling. The Olympic athlete and national hero who shot and killed his model girlfriend. On bail and facing murder charges, it looked like the beginning of the end of a glittering career and sparked questions the world over. Who was Oscar Pistorius and how could this have happened? The Olympic athlete is 27 years old. He turns 28 in late November. He was born missing crucial bones in his lower legs, which were amputated before the age of one. We've kind of 
made these only for sprinting because we restricted it to the sole that we used like a normal running spike. Known as Blade Runner because of his distinctive prosthesis, to his family and friends he was simply Oz, Ozzy to his girlfriend. Here is another kind of cinema, there is a photo of him and he is too klein. Was. Broadcast before the 2012 Olympics, this interview inside his grandmother's Pretoria home gave an insight into his life before sporting fame. But I hope from Kakiri. She told tales of him as a child, of the heartbreak of his disability, his mother's sudden death when he was only 15, and the day he came home with his first prosthetics bearing toes. Look, I've got toes. Is it new wonderful? But it was a different man who appeared in court months later. Do you understand the charge? I do, my lady. How do you plead? Uh, not guilty, my lady. This was to be a trial like no other. No jury, one judge and 24-hour dedicated cable TV coverage available for the world to watch the story unfolding. And they weren't disappointed. The athlete's very first day on the stand was one of tense emotion. I'd like to apologise and say that there's not a moment and there hasn't been a moment um, since since this tragedy happened that I haven't thought about you know, your family. I wake up every morning and you're the first people I think of, the first people I pray for. I can't imagine the, the pain and the sorrow and the emptiness that I've caused you and your family. Uh, I was simply trying to protect Riva. I can promise that when she went to bed that night she felt loved. But Chief Prosecutor Harry Nell was quick to question the motive for this apology, a sign of the dogged tactics he would continue to use throughout the trial. If, that, if you were wanting to do it, why would you create a spectacle in court, in the public domain, in the public eye, apologise and not in private? Your life is just about you, what's important to Oscar. Oscar shouldn't get into trouble, this shouldn't get into the media. You were very concerned about what's good for Oscar. I was very concerned for both of our futures, my lady. The trial continued on and off for six months and still the world wondered what really happened that night. I had my fingers in her mouth to help her try to breathe. I had my hand on her hip, I was trying to stop the bleeding. Riva, Riva had already died um, whilst I was holding her. You killed Riva Stiankam, that's what you did. I made a mistake, my lady. You, you're repeating it three times. What was your mistake? My mistake is that I took Reva's life, my lady. You killed her. You shot and killed her. My life is on the line. Of course, I think of every single word I say when I'm sitting here. But Reva doesn't have a life anymore because of what you've done. But would the public and the judge accept this picture of a man distraught at what he'd done? Johann Stipp did. He's a neighbour and was on the scene within minutes of the shooting. I remember the first thing he said when I got there was that he said, I shot her. I thought she was a burglar and I shot her. Oscar was crying all the time. He um, prayed to God to please let her live. She must not die. He said at one stage while, while he was praying that he will dedicate his life and her life to God if she would just only live and, and not die that night. The court heard from other neighbours key prosecution witnesses who said they heard screaming in the moments before Riva was shot. I anticipated something was going to happen. Because of the, the climax of her shots, I knew something terrible was happening in that house. I, was think, I thought they were being attacked in their house. You only shout like that if your life is really threatened. The disease was then in the toilet. The door was locked. And the window was closed and I put it to you that there's no way that even standing on the balconies, even standing closer, that you would have been able to hear screams if it was inside the toilet. Unsurprisingly, defence and prosecution clashed repeatedly throughout this trial, both becoming stars in their own right in South Africa. Just who was the man chosen by Oscar Pistorius to clear his name, and who was fighting for the state to put him behind bars? 
Barry Rue is a senior counsel defending Oscar Pistorius for a rumoured fee of almost €4,000 a day. He has 32 years of experience and joined the bar in Johannesburg in 1982. He specialises in criminal cases, insurance, marriage, aviation and contractual cases. He's been involved in high-profile and controversial trials before in his career and has been described by colleagues as talented and ethical. Harry Nell, in turn, is South Africa's state prosecutor. He has served as a former head of an elite unit formed to root out corruption, the Directorate of Special Operations, also known as the Scorpions, during which time he successfully prosecuted a former South African police commissioner. Colleagues describe him as an unassuming family man for whom, professionally, everything turns to gold. During court proceedings, the lawyers disagreed on everything from what time the pair reportedly went to bed to how close the couple really were. I was very keen on Riva. I, um, I think, if anything, I was maybe more into her than she was at times um, with me. And I let her just take her space. I mean, it wasn't always easy. I, I was besotted with her. And um, times it went, we kind of spoke, and, and you know, the relationship built up to a point in, like, I'd say, mid January, January, mid January that we really knew that we started caring about each other, we started talking about future plans. The phrase, I love you, appeared twice in Riva's WhatsApp. Both times she wrote that to her mother, never to you, and you never to her, am I right? That's correct, my lady, I never got the opportunity to tell Riva that I loved her. On the 8th of August last year, on, on Reva's birthday, um, I opened her Valentine's gift to me. The envelope says Ozzy with, with some hearts and a squiggle. And then it says on the front of the card, roses are red, violets are blue. And then on the inside, she wrote the date on the left. And then on the right, she says, I think today is a good day to tell you that. And then it says, I love you. The trial appeared to take its toll on the 27-year-old accused. More than once proceedings were adjourned to allow him to gather his emotions. I sat over Riva and I cried. And um, I don't know, I don't know how long... I don't know how long I was there for. <laughs> she wasn't breathing. By the second week, Oscar Pistorius was vomiting in court. As the focus moved on to the immediate aftermath of Riva's death and what authorities found when they arrived on the scene. The effect the ammunition had on a watermelon, it exploded. Am I right? That's correct. Already. You know that the same happened to Riva's head. But I will not look at a picture where I'm tormented by what I saw and felt that night. As I picked Riva up, my fingers touched her head. I remember. I don't have to look at a picture. I was there. Again, the world wondered who was Oscar Pistorius. Was he a man often angry, trigger-happy and paranoid? Or a vulnerable amputee who made a mistake? Friends were called as witnesses along with an ex-girlfriend. She told of being shouted at by Oscar Pistorius on several occasions and an incident in which he fired a gun out a car sunroof for no given reason. I saw Oscar take his gun and shoot out of the car roof. Was there a sound? A very, very loud sound. What did he say? They both laughed. His friend, Kevin Marina, said just weeks before Riva's death, Oscar Pistorius had fired a gun in a restaurant and asked someone else to take the blame. Once the shot went off, I looked down, I was in shock. What can you remember? What did you Well, don't quote me, Darren, but I remember he said, please take the blame for me. There's too much media hype around me. I, I, just take the blame for me. And Darren Fresco, when the restaurant owners or manager came up, Darren took the blame. As efforts to determine the athlete's character continued, the question remained, what happened on that night?